OK, so we are going to start. Can you listen to me well and can you uh, watch my screen? Yes, we can. OK, perfect. So OK, first, first of all, hello to everyone and thanks for attending this this webinar. This is the, the first webinar of, of, of a set that we have developed with the idea of sharing with the space professionals our programs as well as contents that have to do with, with the space industry. My name is, is Julio Verdasco and I'm, I'm Head of Sales and Project Direction in, in Bito Space. Our CDO and co-founder of Bito Space, Valentin Canales, is also attending this webinar. At, at the end of the presentation, we can count on him for answering the questions you can have. Please, if you have any question, write it in the chat and, and at the end of the presentation, the presentation will review them and we'll answer them. Well, this, this first webinar is focusing our program for universities, a very interesting initiative where we want to support universities developing, building and testing in stratosphere their scientific experiments. Well, uh, for, for all of you that didn't know Bito Space before, I would like to, to give you some information about, about us. Well, we are a, a space company based in UK and Spain, founded by four Spanish guys, inspired by a video from Red Bull Strader's mission. The company started with the vision of democratizing the access to orbit for small satellites, creating a novel launch system based on stratospheric balloons. We are developing a raccoon solution for launching small satellites to low orbit. Additionally, uh, and in parallel, uh, we have developed other activity lines based in, in balloon operations. In Estinier Space Testing, and in joint development with the European Space Agency, the ESA, our service uh, consists of offering component testing for satellite manufacturers in space-like conditions prior to the launch of their products into orbit. Another line of activity is, is, is CAPS High Altitude Pseudo Satellites. This service is focused on developing uh, Earth observation activities with our own instruments for data collection, launch mission to boost communication in remote areas and create fast, ultra secure communications for different industries as defense, agriculture and etc. Well, and, and, and another line of activities, telecommunication and civil security, but this will be uh, in another webinar. Well, uh, we launched this program with the idea of sharing with uh, universities and students teams a real space project in which to have the opportunity of design, build and test a CubeSat for a mission of their choice. Earth observation, environment, environment control, communications and so on. And fly the, their CubeSat in a stratospheric flight around 20, 25 kilometers of altitude performed by B2 space team. Additionally, the students will enjoy a project based learning participating from the beginning till the end in a real project where they will find technical challenge, goals to achieve and find the best way to work in team where they will have to manage a common project. The main objective of this project is to facilitate the launch and development of ideas that have clear use cases in society through space and that can be matured and scaled in the future. To this end, we want to offer universities a platform to realize, develop and test these ideas. Additionally, we offer qualified technical and management support based on the accumulated experience of Vito Space Team. Well, it's interesting at this point to underline that the, the positioning that uh, we leave to, to, to the university themselves to define their ideas and we give some suggestions in the mission definition phase at the beginning of the program. Well, as I mentioned, the, the, the project based learning is the, is the best way for students, not only for, for getting knowledge, but also for, for managing a real project for making decisions, for team working, and finally for, for become pro, becoming problem solvers. 
this is a model that uh, all the, the universities are using and, and well, and this program wants to be an additional tool for them. We know that any space project is not cheap and it requires a effort from the universities and students. And that's why we define this program for enabling the access to this kind of project. Well, this, this, this program is a, a very, very exciting experience for students and, and, well, and, and they will develop technical and, and manage it, management skills that will be very useful and, and necessary for sure in, in their professional life. They will enjoy also a, a real project from the beginning till the end and they will have to face many problems. They will have to make decisions always supported by, by B2Space team. And at the end of the project, they will leave the flight of their CubeSat in, in a very, very exciting event. We know that uh, it, it, it requires an additional effort from students because we know that they have a very, very heavy workload, but this could be a, a, a complementary learning, an accelerator for them. Well, and, and for universities, well, this program is a low cost and high impact activity that will improve the university positioning and help attract more students, funding, sponsors and collaborations. Additionally, it offers universities a quick and, and, and easy way to create R&D teams that can carry out research projects and give continuity to the ideas and development that are carried out. Well, <clears throat> speaking about the project, Let's just start with the with the scope of the project. The scope of the project is to design and build a CubeSat to perform a mission. It's very important to, to define what will be the use case, what will be the mission, what's necessary for that. Will it be a, a commercial product or will it be a research project? Well, all, all these questions and more for sure have to be answered when you want to launch a project like this. And every project has to be managed. And in this program, we propose the PMI standard for project management. This is one of the most used project management methodologies in the in the professional world. And in this program, we we will work work around four knowledge areas: the scope management, the planning management, that is well, all have to, to do with activities, dates, resources, milestones risk management for minimizing them for sure and we know that is that in every project that there will appear risks then that some of them will will become issues the objective is to minimize them or decrease the probability they become an issue and the last the cost management this, chap this chapter is especially interesting because more than manage your your budget we want the teams to control the engineering hours for for having a real view of the the of these costs well about the the phases of the project the the we have defined it six different phases the first one is the mission definition here the use case and the scope will be defined it the second one is requirements and specifications that uh, will give a frame of the final solution. Uh, third one, design, for one, development, fifth one, integration and testing, and the last one, the launch. Well, this, these phases uh, will be developed in the program and will define a planning with the activities and deliverable for each one. The mission, well, as I mentioned, uh, the, the mission will be proposed by 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 each team, by every, each university, and and here you can find some some examples. For example, in, in communications, uh, 4G and 5G coverage in remote areas or emergency communications in disaster, in disasters, or to support to to a smart application, all that has to do with EO, IOT, sorry. Uh, well, in earth observation and climate resilience, for example, mapping and cartography, environment control, illegal fishing, oil spills. Well, on, for example, in agriculture and land management from space, smart agriculture, wildfires, aquifer management, and bio experiments. Well, as I mentioned, this 
the mission will be defined uh, by the by the teams by the universities well the about the technical aspects the cubesat uh, will have a, a standard uh, size of 3 units and, and a weight of, of up to 4 kilograms the the different subsystems that, that will be integrated on the final solutions are also, of course, the structure and the mechanisms, the avionic systems, the TT and C subsystem, telemetry, tracking and control, and, for, and also the, the payload. Well, the first one, the structure would be the choices of the of the QSAT, in which all the subsystem and components will be integrated. So, uh, depending on, on what we plan to integrate, we should choose one design or another to make it more accessible or to have greater visibility or other requirements that we have uh, identified. This uh, structure can be purchased uh, as, as a product on the shelf or it can be even manufactured ad hoc with a, with a 3D printer. The different mechanisms can can be included depending on the technical solution. It would be, for example, deployable booms for antennas, instruments, robotic arms, gimbal systems, actuators. Oh well, here you can find some some exam some pictures, some examples. Wait, about uh, avionic system. Uh, avionic system include communication, navigation, and all systems that are fitted to satellite to perform individual functions. For example, on board computer, the GPS antenna, magnetometer, uh, etc. Well, uh, about TT, TT and C, uh, could be integrated in avionic system, but anyway, well, uh, the telemetry tracking and, and control subsystem of a satellite provides a connection between the satellite itself and the facilities on, on the ground. The purpose of, of the TTNC function is, is to ensure the satellite that performs correctly. There are three major functions of the TTNC subsystem, as is telemetry signals uh, that include the, the spacecraft information, altitude, location, temperatures, power supply, and so on. The tracking, that is the monitoring of the satellite position at all points during during the mission, and command of signals or orders to act on the satellite subsystems. Well, um, the payload in this project uh, will consist of the components or experiment to be tested and the associated equipment. In this sense, we can find some examples, for example, sensors, uh, temperature, barometer, humidity, light, and, and so on, or cameras, hyperspectral, uh, infrared, etc. And or the equipment with, uh, I don't know, a biological payload to analyze its behavior, or different different examples. At this point, it's very important to consider the, the, the power requirements, the weight, the size, and all, all the technical aspects define it in the requirements and specification phase. Well, about the launch and recovery, at the end of the program, the, the CubeSats will be taken to near space in a, in a stratospheric flight. The conditions in the stratosphere, in the stratosphere are very similar to those in, in, in orbit in terms of pressure, radiation and temperature gradients. So the CubeSats will be subjected to those conditions which are equivalent to an environment of a TRL-6 maturity level. The launch and recovery missions mission consists of uh, several phases. The launch itself, which will be carried out within a suitable facility and for which uh, b space will have previously requested the appropriate permissions from the different organization in, in charge of monitoring and managing the, the flight spaces. Before the launch, the CubeSat will be integrated in, to the bit space platform. Well, the, the STEM phase that uh, it has uh, a duration around two hours with an ASTEM rate of uh, 12 kilometers hour. 
uh, and the stratospheric flight that depending on the experiments to be performed, the flight uh, will last from two to four hours. So the duration could be could be longer for sure. First, that once the stratospheric flight has been completed and in order to start the stem phase, the volume will be exploded by, by a pyrotechnical mechanism and the parachute will be automatically opened during the fall. In the descent, the platform and the equipment will be supported by, by the parachute. The payload will be monitored at uh, every time for recovery. Um, payload recovery that uh, before the launch, a uh, wind study will be carried out and calculation will be made to estimate the area where the payload will land. In addition, the location of the payload will be monitored remotely and a B2 space team will travel to the pickup area and return the CubeSat to, to each team. Well, about the flight, maybe later if you want, if you want, Valentin Canales, our CDO can give you more details about it, but here you can find more information. For example, the, the, the cruise altitudes from, are from, from 18 to, to 40 kilometers. The length of the flight uh, are from 2 to 12 hours uh, maximum, but uh, for this program we will develop flights from 2 to 4, maximum 4 hours. And at the flight levels of our near space test bench, uh, the, the atmospheric temperature and, and pressure change dramatically. The pressure and density at, for example, at 35 kilometers of altitude is 99.9% smaller than on the ground. So, well, due the, the reduced density of the air, thermal convection is negligible and, and radiation becomes the main source of heat exchange in the stratosphere. Therefore, areas facing the sun will get extremely hot, while areas in the dark will be extremely cold, like in, in, in orbit conditions. Well, uh, the team, about the team, uh, about the organization of the teams, we propose uh, this this OBS, this uh, organization focusing on, on communication and, and team working. Well, the, the program coordinator uh, should be a professor that uh, will coordinate the, the program with b space in terms of uh, dates, activities, purchasing. Well, in the beginning of the program, he or she will, will organize the teams in, in different groups and will manage the communication between the, the university and, and b space. The technical, the technical coordinators will be a students that uh, will coordinate the communication between all the, the different technical groups, as a bionic, uh, structural, TTLC, and, and so on, and, and will manage the integration of the different subsystems, the rigs, and all that has to do with, with the technical solution. Well, and the project manager that uh, also will be a student that uh, will coordinate the project, but in terms of project management, uh, as we mentioned, in terms of uh, scope, uh, planning, risks, costs, and all that has to do with, with project management topics. And the different technical technical groups that uh, will be split by subsystems, for example, a structural and thermal, a bionics, TTNC or payload. And well, uh, this is a suggestion. And but with this organization, with we want to organize the activity to be developed in, in different groups and, and cover all, all the topics defined in in a scope. And well, our, our way of working, uh, well, uh, as, as we mentioned, we are going to, we want to, to organize the, the students in, in different groups inside the team uh, that uh, we, we propose the, the organization, as you could see in, in the last slide. Uh, you will have, uh, the teams will have weekly 90 minute session, sessions. And well, each week uh, we will start with a lecture session on the subject to be worked on that week. And well, and after that, 
we will have a, an interactive workshop with question and answer to, well in order to 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 help you to help teams to solve uh, the technical the technical questions um the teams will have a dedicated email address to to submit questions uh, for that uh, the project coordinator will compile will compile all the questions that the teams uh, can have during the work uh, and well and, and this this these emails will be sent to b2 space and all the questions will be answered uh, by our engineering team and with with advices tips and well and and good after good, good answers for that and well and we will we will do progress reviews with all the teams uh, monthly bit space well we will we'll ask teams to present a report of the on the progress of, of the project well reviewing uh, the achievements the areas where where is the support is, is needed and risk and next steps well this can give a, 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 a vision for the for the for the teams a good vision of the project and, and can uh, can advance in in the in, in the next steps of the of the project well um for that uh, we have uh, defined it two different modalities or two different options for the universities one is the that uh, i have been speaking about this last uh, 20 or 30 minutes that is the one that we help you to to build and fly your cubes at for that uh, well uh, every university will define a project team around eight students could be more or less depends on the university well the the duration of the project will be depends on the of the of the needs of the university but around six or nine months is an, an academic year and well the teams will have six hours by month of mentorship and engineering support by b2 space and well we we will count on different uh, industry leaders uh, and we will have monthly seasons and lectures by by these industry leaders and well and uh, at the end of the of the program uh, we will we will do the the, the flight test uh, with uh, and you 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 can build this this uh, cubesat three unit cubesat uh, with a maximum of four uh, kilograms of mass and well at the stratory the stratospheric flight will be from 20 to 20 to 23 kilometers of altitude and well and after that we will get flight data and image back that were sent to to the teams and the program merchandising for that and well this is the one option one one modality uh, that we help you to build and fly your cubes at and another one is is fly your scientific experiment for example if you have a research team in your university developing a scientific experiment or, or you are developing your own CubeSat and you want to taste it in, in conditions very similar to, to in orbit, maybe you don't need the, the engineering support from, from Vito Space. <coughs> Sorry, but you need to fly your, your technical solution. For this, for these uh, cases, uh, we define it the modality fly your scientific experiment where we'll provide you a, a vehicle to, to the stratosphere. We'll operate the mission, we'll integrate your, your solution in, in our platform, and we'll manage all the necessary permissions for it. And after the flight, we'll, we'll recover your payload and we'll return it to you. And well, uh, now I would like to share with you a short video uh, of uh, of the, the the last campaign launch that we did in Spain in July 2021, and it well is a summary of the before the launch and, and just the launch 
and it's only two minutes, but I think that is it's a good uh, it's a good vision for you. Sorry. Okay, so, well, uh, this is, uh, that's all. Uh, I don't know, maybe if, if Valentin, Valentin Canales, our CDO, he wants to introduce himself and and to add uh, some information, a part of, <laughs> of all the speech that I, that I did. Good, yes, yeah, as well. So, yeah, as, as you mentioned, I'm Valentin Canales, aerospace engineer as well by training and been in the space industry for, for quite a while at the moment. So, yeah, very nice presentation. I mean, this is a very comprehensive program that we can develop as well to suit any kind of, uh, let's say, a university projects or research projects in general. And I wanted Julio to ask you a, a question as well that maybe as well it, it can help some of the people attending. So does the university need to have any kind of a specific, I don't know, level of preparation? Uh, how much work does it require? Can, uh, can you explain us, I mean, if, if we need the, the universities to be, let's say, prepared for this, or if this can be as well suited to fit their needs in terms of path and development? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, it's a good question as well. For this program, well, it's not necessary. We know that uh, the technical engineering uh, profiles are the are the right profiles for for developing this this uh, this program, and is well, this program is 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 focused on them. But it could uh, could be uh, aerospace engineers or industrial engineers or computer science or telecommunication engineers. But anyway, with the basic uh, knowledge uh, that can have in in uh, uh, in the middle of the of the career of, of the career in, in the university. With this basic uh, knowledge, can the, the the teams can develop uh, this cubesat because the the engineering B two space team will support in every every step uh, uh, the teams. So well, they didn't they can have uh, stoppers uh, in the beginning, well in the in the specifications or in the design, but with uh, the B two space team support. Uh, they will achieve the final goal that is uh, to to build this this cubesat uh, using it for the mission they decide. Good. Thank you. I don't know if and, uh, and for example as well. Uh, for, I don't know if other let's say students as well let's say from non engineering related. Uh, professions, for example, could have as well a fit because I imagine that as well that to launch this kind of projects, there are not only engineers related, but as well there could be as well some other things such as such as I don't know uh, people just interested in law as well to understand regulations or insurance. Uh, is that true? Yes, for sure. Yes, it's another aspect that can be that can be very interesting in this in this program. Uh, the example that you that you put on the table, for example, uh, uh, the, the law, uh, all the permissions, and that uh, that uh, that has to be uh, required for this kind of, uh, of of program for this kind of missions, that uh, can be the, all that all those activities can be developed by by this profile. So, for example, another profile that has not to do with for example, the uh, biological uh, profile that for that can define the mission, and after that, after the the the, the, the program, uh, they or he or she can analyze uh, all the information for the for the use case. So these are some examples about uh, different profiles that not have to do with uh, with engineering, or for uh, for example, another profile that can be the project manager because he's specialized in project management. So the technical aspects in this case has not uh, very important. So for sure that the teams can have different different profiles that not all of them have to, to be engineers. Yes, because well, I mean they could come from our well, as a business background, right? To define what would yeah. be the business case of that or who could be the customers, how to sell that service, right? Yeah, right, right, you're right. Yes. Good. Thank you, Julio. <laughs> you're welcome. At the end of the at the end, the teams has been uh, well, has been defined with different uh, groups. So these roles can be working different activities. And that's why uh, these different profiles can be can be inside these teams. OK. I don't know if uh, you're welcome. I don't know if uh, in the chat we don't have any any other questions, but I don't know if you want uh, to add or to to clarify <laughs> any other topic uh, about. Uh, I would just like to add that as well, this is open for universities worldwide, so we are working with universities on the European Union which, uh, and Europe, which is where we are based in the UK and, and Spain, for example, but as well, we welcome universities from every corner of the world. So uh, Japan, Australia, North America, South America, we will work with all of the universities and as well try to define suitable projects together in order to help them as well achieve their and increase their capabilities on the space sector. Right, yes. 
Okay, so well, uh, if uh, it's not, is there isn't there any any other question? Well, uh, we are going to to close this this first webinar, and, and well, please uh, contact us if you have any question or you want the more information or additional information about our our program. And, and well, and, and I hope to see you in the in the next webinar that uh, will be uh, published in our in, in in social networks and in our website. So thanks, thanks to everybody. Uh, I think that Toshi, Toshi wants to ask a question. Oh, okay. So maybe because I cannot unmute uh, his microphone, maybe by chat. Writing in the chat. OK. He has some questions for us. And I think that now Toshi as well, you can, if you unmute yourself, I think that you could be able to to talk okay. directly. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, Julio, thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Um, I have two questions. One is, um, how long do we need the cruise cruise time from uh, ground to stratospheric area? How how sorry how how long the, do, do we need yeah. the, uh, the interval time from uh, ground to uh, stratospheric? Yes, around two hours is right, uh, Valentin. Depends of the altitude. Yes. That's yeah, exactly. Between okay, for, for example, 90 30 minutes to high. between 90 minutes to two hours, depending on how high it goes, the, as well depending on the ascension speed that we want to achieve. That as well that depends on the total payload. But just to give you a, a rough figure, it would be yeah between 60 minutes to 120 minutes. Okay, it means uh, one hour to uh, 1.5 1.5 hours approximately. From one to two hours. Oh, okay, okay, understood. So next question is that, um, Julio, could you kindly show me the uh, slide of uh, launch and the recovery process? Yes, one moment. Okay. This one is right. Ah, yeah, yeah, correct. So a uh, bracket four, it's a burst. So how sh do we do you control the balloon burst? It's a you need to uh, uh, powder of explosion or uh, any kind of the uh, remote control from the ground. Well, it's how a it's a balloon. Yes, huh? it's a pyrotechnic mechanism. But uh, Valentin, can you give <laughs> more detail? <laughs> <laughs> so okay. so we. Basically, we have a telecommand system that when we want to terminate the flight for whatever reason, because we have fulfilled all of the mission requirements and objectives, or because for some emergency, we are required to take the, the balloon down. We activate this system that sends a command to the balloon that activates a small pyrotechnic device that causes as well uh, to break the balloon. So we make a big hole on the balloon, so all of the helium is lost. And then we separate the gondola from the rest of the balloon and it descends on a parachute, having a soft landing to then recover it by uh, the ground transportation service. OK, uh, so it means the bus, not, for example, at open the gate or open the nose or stuff like that. We open a section on the balloon. So on the balloon fabric, we create a hole in order to oh, okay. release okay. the helium out of the balloon. 
Ah, okay, okay, understood. Okay, good, good. Is it the same mechanism as a commercial launch? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is as well used in stratospheric balloon operations. Ah, okay, okay, understood. Okay, good. Um, Julio, so um, unfortunately, there is no audiences from Japan, but they seem to be interested in our university program. Is it possible to watch by your recorded uh, data our website? Yes, 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 for sure. This this webinar it's, uh, it has been recorded and and it was uh, available in our website. Okay, okay, understood. So let me try to share the information right after this session, because some of the uh, educational organization like uh, university or senior high school seems to be interested in the program because um, I already had a presentation uh, two weeks ago and also they seem to be interested in our program. So I, I appreciate to share with uh, recorded data our website, then we, we can show to the uh, potential customers in Japan. Yes, yes, perfect, perfect. Okay, and good. <laughs> Okay, okay, so thank you. Well, thanks, thanks, Tosi, for your for your questions, and, and thanks to everybody. Thanks, Valentin, and thanks uh, for attending this this first webinar. And I hope to see you in the next ones. Bye. Have a nice thank day. Thank you, Julio. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you all.